I think most people listening to this would say to themselves, that's an under punishment, even not knowing much of anything else, right? There aren't a whole lot of Deshaun Watson supporters. Out oh yeah, there. they are. Yeah. No, there's plenty in, in the state of Ohio. There, there's a bunch in, in parts of South Carolina. There are a bunch. He has a very passionate as any person that goes through scandal like their defenders just fortify themselves in these beliefs they're ultra defensive they're in the wrong but they don't want to admit it they're they're stubborn they're holding on to things they they hold dear now because of the sports tribalism you have people that have to be all in and defend deshaun watson even if they find it problematic so i, I find Brown's twitter has certainly changed over the last few months in staunch defense of this guy and they win now. You endured the hurricane of blowback. You endured Mike Ryan quitting his fandom of your football team because some of it was so dirty and disgusting. You have a quarterback's private parts, dry humping women, the details as expressed by these women of like throwing his semen at them are galling and feel like crimes, and the penalty is that Deshaun Watson wins. The Cleveland Browns win. They endured whatever had to be endured, and in the negotiations and guaranteeing him the money, they now get 10 years of Deshaun Watson. They now more they ran off Baker Mayfield, the Odell Beckham thing, the season of expectations, all of that was run off. The bridge to that now gets you to Deshaun Watson, and very soon people will be talking about what is the impact of not playing that position they, they at, a, at a high rate of speed for two years. Very soon, the conversation will turn to him as a player. And in six games, this might not be forgotten, but the Cleveland Browns will win. They have a franchise quarterback. The big winner today is not football. It's certainly not women. It's not Roger Goodell. It is Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. They win today with this penalty that has one division game in it. Yeah, the, the key part being they, they win today. If you look at that franchise's history, and if you look at Deshaun Watson's personal history, you can't rule out, like, you think this is done? I I personally don't. I think a lot of people are spinning this as a win. Me, an independent arbiter, told you he did some of that shit. He got punished for doing it. The problems that you had with Deshaun Watson entering this are not gone. They've been confirmed by an independent arbiter, and yet it's framed as a win. He he didn't lose a cent last season. He's not losing much this season. He's, he's losing three hundred forty-five thousand again. This man, oh man! If you're a woman watching this, and the machine working this way to take away Goodell's power on this one, where you're you are realizing an emperor has no clothes situation for so many years Roger Goodell has gotten his salary to where it is as a piñata for the owners because he was the hard line commissioner who was going to clean up the criminals in his league and he overpunished beyond the law and for him to not even, not be able to fight this one out for him to have to get out of the way as the Browns win Deshaun Watson wins and women lose yeah. and your sport loses, but for six games, because this, you think this is going to make its way into the broadcasts. You think there's going to be a lot of, you think in 10 games from now, hell, look at what Tyreek Hill has already done for the dolphins. Look at what he's already done for the dolphins. You think 10 games from now, anybody's going to be talking about a quarterback who had a dry humping table problem. No, they'll, they'll talk about it Monday night football when he, when he comes back. And I think, league broadcast partners have shown you that they're not really all that interested in applying that kind of context to it. Look at the, uh, the celebration of Ben Roethlisberger's career that ESPN threw um, on, uh, on his final home game uh, against the Cleveland Browns last year. They, they tend to avoid these things. It really disappoints me. And I can't say I expected more that right now on, on Cleveland radio, you have people celebrating this, you have people analyzing this right now on ESPN. What does this mean for the Browns? Only one division game. Wow, they got a lucky break with the schedule. All of it, to me, is very sad and pathetic because he did a lot of this, and he had the resources to settle it. You had someone in a position of authority tell you as much that a lot 
of suspicions were confirmed. A lot of allegations were confirmed, and yet this is being held up as a, a major victory. Can I can I go back though for a second, Mike, on the history of this? You get mad every time I frame this around Goodell, but Goodell has been here as a symbol for ownership shield. Goodell makes his money, a, a money that is a money that is now private because he makes so much of it. Because the television money is so giant. This man made his name on being the guy who punishes above the law. It's how he became the biggest commissioner in sports. Manfred follows him on Trevor Bauer. Manfred learned at his knee. Wait a minute. When a guy does something like this, I can get rid of him for years and end his career. Goodell was the pioneer there, using his power like it hadn't been used by Anybody since baseball commissioners actually governed the game in the 1920s. And today he puts down his sword. Today the players' union and the lawyers and Rusty Harden, all of them. Well, we don't know if he's put it. We don't know the appeals process. And it wasn't today. It was in the last round of collective bargaining in which everyone saw that Roger Goodell had too much authority over the punishment, the, the league discipline. And it and it got changed. This is not really a, a Roger Goodell story for me. It it becomes one if Roger then decides to take it into his hands and and, and appeal this decision because then he has a lot more power. And I think he just wants to avoid that entirely. Doesn't he have to? No, I don't. Isn't he incentivized no. to to look what, to keep this national conversation in, incentivized going? to look like he cares, to incentivized to pretend like he cares? How this feels to his league which way is he incentivized today is it to make it a larger public fight where he says look i'm trying to do more here i'm trying to govern the way i've always governed i over punish i'm not the light on crime commissioner well, who does roger goodell answer to the other owners do the other owners want to draw this out because it's not roger goodell like morally i know i know for a fact roger goodell has been sampling opinions asking for advice what should he do he's been running scenarios but keep in mind, early on in this process, and we had reports that it was invoked, the behavior of other owners. Daniel Snyder, Jerry Jones. You think he wants to appeal that and have that discussion go right but back out there? Have... The NFLPA already told you, NFL, you better not okay, appeal Okay, so just know then, if that's the way that they go, if the hardline commissioner says, no, nope, not interested in that fight, they will have told you. They would have put out the press release. Don't actually care about women. Don't even care how things look. Nope, just want it to go away. Want Deshaun Watson to win, the Browns to win, the NFL to win, and women lose. And like, Roger if Goodell's he does not job. fight this. But Roger Goodell's doing his job, right? Because you're blaming Roger Goodell right now when, like, he didn't come up with this decision. The league recommended a year. The league engaged Mike, in settlement talks the, trying Mike, to get 12 Mike, games. The reason I'm blaming money. Roger Goodell is because I know that name because he set forth the rules that made it so that in an instant like this, he can be governor. You tell me right, that. Right, but he also collectively bargained a scenario in which right now he he can just walk away from this. He did not have a say in this punishment. He actually caught a public L. He wanted a year. And in settlement talks, he wanted 12 games and a hefty fine. Like, the loss that you're saying that every – it's just been – like we have a spotlight on this L that Roger Goodell perceived in the public. The L came years ago when they collectively bargained that he wouldn't but, be but the I, guy. The, right, I, he, he's he's acknowledged that he's not going to do this anymore. He is not the overpunishing commissioner. Now he still could be because after this process, the appeal comes to him. If the NFL wants to appeal it, they can. But they negotiated this process, and this is according to Albert Breer, at least in part because some owners, after so many missteps in discipline over the last decade, wanted the NFL to take a step back in that arena and essentially outsource it to a neutral arbitrator. They have done so. This has been the product of it. And so it, Roger Goodell can decide right now whether or not he wants to continue to be in this game or has he officially quit it. You can't claim that you care about women if it's about how things look and business and everything else takes a priority over how it is you made your name as the Punisher. You and and That's harsh. Oh, I, I think it's too harsh. I, I understand. Look, I am not defending that the NFL cares about women. If you look at their toxic work culture, if you see how they covered up Mike, the Washington Commanders, but if, Commanders if thing, what you're telling me is that they can't set a precedent here because. Look at what it does to Snyder. All of this is still men protecting men. 
Yeah, it, ultimate. Well, the I think the decision to whether move forward and we need that shoe to drop. The decision to move forward with an appeal. I think the the priority there is not women. It's probably men who are in ownership position because they don't want to have that conversation drawn out in public. I get you. But also, this was an independent arbiter who was a woman. Roger Goodell had nothing to do with this decision. His decision comes now. I imagine he's going to take the appropriate amount of time to move forward with what to do, and he's going to ask his bosses, the NFL owners, and they are going to care a hell of a lot less about women than maybe even he does.